I told Amy she has to tell me when it's my turn. She says it's my turn. We've been looking forward to this day. We have uh, some neighbors that moved in in September. That's the only part I know I think I got right. I've been telling a lot of stuff about Luke and I know it's true. <laughs> you know, it's, his first name is Luke and his last name is Fish. I said, wonder what his middle name is. Is it Light or Love? <laughs> but anyway, we're glad to have him come this morning and speak to us. So Luke, if you'll make your way on up here. I told everybody last week he was from Maine. But he's all the way across. He's in, from California. And his wife is from Canada. Now, that's a story in there somewhere. But that's his story to tell. But anyway, Luke, we're glad to have you. Where you go? I told him when I got ready down to do some, I didn't want to see him running out across the top of the mountain. I said, be sure and come down here. You want to hold that or you want to leave it on? I have no idea. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. It'll be an experience. And everybody can hear good. Yeah. Because you have to use it to get close to it. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. We were joking a little earlier. If uh, Santa was going to introduce me, I'd have to take an hour to, or so to explain all the things that he did wrong in, in the introduction. And then we wouldn't have any anything from the Bible this morning. So, yes, I am uh, Luke. We just moved here from Canada uh, in September. Uh, my wife is, is Canadian, so he got all that right. Uh, born and raised in California, went to Colorado for a year to go to Bible school, went back to California. From California, went to Chicago to Moody Bible Institute. From, Cal uh, from Chicago, went back to California. So if you're keeping track, those are all C's, right? So then from California, God called us up to the Canada to pastor a church there, and now we are here in Blairs. But I want to say Chatham because it has a C to it, and then we're kind of close, because that's the only one that doesn't work. Well, let me just say it's an, an absolute privilege to be able to bring God's word today, and I pray that uh, y'all don't hear me, y'all don't see me, but you see Christ. And you hear Christ. Because that's what it's all about today. I might need that. So this morning we're going to talk, talk a little bit about focus and perseverance. So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Just a little bit, we're going to read all of it. And then we're going to walk through it a little bit to see what God has to say to us. My personal goal and mission in life is to be a gospel, to be Christ's gospel, both in word and in deed. And I think that I'm not alone in saying that sometimes I'm able to reach my goal, and sometimes I fall short of reaching that goal by some things that I do and things that I say. Paul is writing to the Second Corinthians because, or to the Corinthians for the second time because they were having a dispute over uh, Paul's authority. Some people didn't want to listen to Paul. Some people thought that uh, Paul wasn't who he said he was. And so at the end of 2 Corinthians, Paul lays it all out, his authority as an apostle. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk up to that point this morning. And we're gonna go from 2 Corinthians chapter four. Let's pray. Father God, I just pray that you will calm my nerves today. It's been a while since I've been able to bring your word to people like this. So God, I just pray that you will just calm me. Father, that you will speak through me. God, that you would use a broken vessel like me to bring your word to people. That you would be able to use this broken vessel, God, on a daily basis to be your gospel light to others. Father, be with us this this morning. Thank you so much for this beautiful morning that we're able to meet up here on this mountain and hear from you. So far, like Chuck said, God, I just pray that you would just penetrate our hearts and minds, God, that we will hear you and that we will meet you today. In your name, amen. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to, we refuse to practice cunning and, I'm sorry, cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled for those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keeping them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants. I know it's bad in this day and age with everything that's going on, but that word servants there actually is slaves. That we are slaves for Christ's sake. For God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, referring to Genesis chapter 1, when there was no light, God brought light into this world, has shown that light in our hearts to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pause for a second. Can I get my water? Please? Yeah. It's not good when you start out, you already, already get parched. Might be a good sign for you guys that'll end early. Thank you. I have been known to go a little long winded. Sorry. <laughs> the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse 7. This is what we're going to focus on this morning. We, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing knowledge or the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is not at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believe and so I spoke, we also believe and we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord, Jesus, will raise us also with Jesus and bring us into the into his presence for it is all for your sake so that the grace extended to more and more people it may increase thanksgiving and to the glory of God so we do not lose heart though our outer self is wasting away our inner self is being renewed day by day for this is light momentary affliction for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not on the things that are seen, but on the things that are unseen. For the light that has been seen, are tra for the things that are seen are trans transient, and the things that are unseen are eternal. Now there's a lot in this. I talked to a pastor buddy of mine last week, and he goes, well, what are you preaching on? And I gave him this passage, he goes, oh, you got it all figured out already, haven't you? At that time, I had to say no. But we're there now. So verse 7, I just want to, the, the way in which I like to bring the word is I like to discuss the word a little bit and I'll walk through it verse by verse so that way we have a little bit of a better understanding. And then at the end, we're going to give some highlight notes and then I'm going to close it all up for us, all right? Now, it's a little difficult because usually I like to interact with people when I'm speaking to them. But since y'all are in cars, for most of y'all are in cars. It's a little challenging, but we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. Verse 7. The treasure and jars of clay. The treasure is refer referring to the gospel, which that is talked about in chapters 2 and 3. The gospel of the light of Jesus Christ in us. 
I see that hand. So that is what the treasure is, the gospel that is buried within us of Jesus Christ. We carry him with us day by day, throughout our day, all the time. And the jars of clay are referring to our broken, mortal, fleshly bodies. And we're going to get into that a little bit further when, when, when Paul goes in to describe all the persecutions and things that, that he's gone through for the Corinthians. And a lot for him has been fleshly. Like, the dude's been stoned and beaten and whipped and shipwrecked. Like, I don't even want to begin to imagine what his back looks like. All for the sake of Christ. And so he's talking about this earthly body, this jar of clay that's, clay that's very fragile. In verse 8 and 9, Paul goes on to grouping these afflictions. He not only lists them, but these are things in which that Paul himself has gone through. Things in which he's telling the Corinthians, hey, these are the things in which I've gone through for your sake, for Christ's sake. These are the ways in which I have stood against opposition, against the devil and the people that are doing the devil's work. And these are the things that have been done to me. You know, it was very powerful for me this morning to listening to your introduction because I think it plays very well into what, I'm, what we're going to talk about and what we see here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul didn't have to stand up. And Paul didn't have to go through all those things. You know, Sam stood up. He, he didn't kneel. He stood up. He was convicted. Paul was convicted. When he met Jesus on the Damascus Road, it was life-changing for him. He was no longer the same person before Damascus as he was after Damascus. He met Jesus then. And all those afflictions and all those trials and all those tribulations that he went through, he did it for a reason. And he had a purpose. And so he lists some of those in these groups in verses 8 and 9. Verse 10. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. What is he talking about? One author I was reading suggested that he. That might be important. I got that one. My wife asked me before, Warren, she's going to bring something to hold all your papers down? I said, It's not windy outside. I'm all good. And look at this. She was right. As she normally is. One writer said that uh, what Paul is referring to here is Golgotha. That, that Paul walks with him with the death, burial, and Jesus, uh, death, burial, and, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in his heart. And that is how he focuses his day day and night based on what Christ did on the cross for him and the benefits of that cross how it impacted him that in the light of all the situations and all the trials and all the tribulations and all the people that he runs to on a daily basis that is his focus and so he always carries in the body the death of Jesus Christ so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies isn't that true? You meet Jesus, then all of a sudden you have this life that you never knew even existed. You have this hope that people have talked about hope for years, but now all of a sudden hope means something completely different to you. And so now you're able to live this new life based on this, this life-changing experience that you have with Jesus Christ because of the cross. And so he carries the death of Jesus with him, but now he lives with this new life. It's interesting, I, as, you, as you go further, um, you get to chapter 5, verse 20. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 talks about you being an ambassador, me being an ambassador, us being ambassadors for Jesus Christ, which is what 
Paul is explaining right here in verse 10. Right? That we, that we live life in, in respect to what Christ did on the cross for us, but we now are able to, to live that out fleshly and earthly, and, and not, not earthly in that sense, but earthly in the way that we relate to other people here on this earth and give them the hope of Jesus Christ. Verse 11, for we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. Paul's body reflects this. He lived life based on, on Christ and putting Christ first. And his body was a reflection of that. Once again, Chuck is, is absolutely right that every single car that's here is going through something. Every person here is struggling with something. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. He was going through something. Always. But yet that didn't allow him to be distracted. That didn't change his focus. That didn't impact his perseverance to press on to the next town. And who knew what waited for him in the next town? We look at the life of Jesus. It wasn't about his will, but it was about the will of the Father. And so he set aside his own desires, his own fleshly needs, and followed the Father day in and day out for 33 years. He was beaten, ridiculed, spat on, all to obey the Father, all to be the light of the Father to people here on earth to die on the cross for us. For we live always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Paul's referring to, to his life in retrospect to the Corinthians. At this, at this time, the Corinthians didn't know what persecution was. There wasn't any major worship centers there. There wasn't a, a Jewish sect that was there in, in Corinth that, that they had a battle with on a regular basis. So for them, it was status quo. It was just living life. No major obstacles that they had to, to wager over. You know, I look at what, what's going on in California right now. They're, they're attacking churches. They're using the, the coronavirus as a way to try to prevent people from worshiping God in a building. Persecution is coming. We haven't seen it full-fledged yet here in America, but it's, it's coming. And people are trying to find ways to prevent the gospel of Jesus Christ from connecting with people. People are trying to find ways, and Satan is alive and well trying to do things in your life to, to deaden that light that God's given you. And I know that there's things that are going on in every one of our lives, things are going on in my life, in which that are so distracting. But our job is to stay focused on Christ and to persevere through whatever trials or tribulations that come about without losing that focus. Christ did it. Paul did it. And as Christians, now we have God living inside of us. So what do we have to fear?
just try to go to verse 13 here. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to that what is written, I believe and so I spoke. We also believe and we also speak. This is in reference to Psalms chapter 116, where the, uh, where the psalmist writes at verse 8 how he went through these, what, that he's going through trials and afflictions. But then for the whole rest of the chapter of, 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 of that psalm, he's praising God. And I just think that it is just a great reminder for us that, yes, we go through great trials and tribulations, and yes, we are afflicted. And yes, there are things in which that, that we could do better. I know that there's things that I can do better at my work to represent Christ. But the point is that when affliction comes, that we are still praising Christ, that we are still praising God, because he is the giver and the sustainer of this world. As as it talks about is, is he's the light. He gave the light. It's Stanley's greatest secret. That Jesus is the light. And Satan wants to do everything he can to squash that light. In you and in me. But here's the exciting part. Knowing that he raised the Lord... Jesus will raise us also with the Lord, the Lord Jesus, wait, I will get this right yet. Knowing that he raised the Lord Jesus, he will also raise us with Jesus and bring us into his presence. What assurance is that? Isn't that so exciting? That no matter what happens here on this earth, that our citizenship is not here. Our citizenship is in heaven. And though trials and tribulations and afflictions come here on this earth to us for various different reasons, our citizenship is not here. It's in heaven. I have this illustration that I'd like to show you guys. I like to claim it as my own, but I can't. I saw it first from a pastor named Francis Chan. He, he did it a little differently than mine, that I am doing it today, but that's all right. Y'all see this glass case? Okay, some of you, hopefully. Okay, here it is. Like I said, I'm used to people responding. It's, it's a little hard doing it this way. That's right. We'll get through it, like I said. So this glass case is going to represent our life here on earth. All right, so, so here you go. You got birth and you got death right here. All in case in this glass case. And the rest of this banner right here is eternity. Where should we be focusing? Do all of our decisions and our thoughts and, and, and our focus in, in, on this life, on this earth, do they reside here? On this glass case? I know that sometimes I do. I want this, I want this, this looks nice. I don't, I don't want to do that. But our focus should be here. Eternity. But we do. We, we, we constantly get bombarded with choices and decisions that want to force us to make choices that, that are here in this class case. In this little, minute, brief amount of time. And yet, we have all eternity here. So why are our choices reflective of that? I'm glad that Paul chose to have this as his focus. So we can see and hear his writings of this is his focus, is eternity. It wasn't about the momentary fleshly things that were going on in his life. Oh, I really don't want to be stoned today. Like that really wasn't on my to-do list when I woke up this morning. But that wasn't his focus. His focus was eternity. So therefore, he, he's able to withstand the beatings. He's able to withstand the stonings, the whippings. He's able to withstand all that. Why? Because that's not what he's focused on. 
He's focused on eternity. And that's where our focus needs to be too. Verse 16. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Isn't that exciting that we live a, we serve a living God who wants to renew us, who wants to refresh us? The joy of meeting together and congregating together and worshiping together is that renewal. Right? Sharing stories, sharing life with others. Is hey, you're going through this, let me pray with you. How can I help you? How can I renew you? How can I be an assistance to you to help you be renewed? As Christ is also working in you to renew you as well. This is the joy of the body of Christ. So once again, verse 17, for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal way to glory beyond all comparison. This momentary affliction. And if you look at Paul's life and you say, I won't say that that is light affliction. But that's what Paul classifies his life as, is I've just had some light affliction, no big deal. Some trials, not a problem. They were just light and far surpassing comparison to eternity. Verse 18. As we look not on the things that are seen, but on the things that are unseen. For the things that are uh, that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Once again, this stuff versus this stuff. Meeting with someone, talking to someone, praying with someone, encouraging someone, those are all eternal things. Those are all things that we need to be doing. So, to close, just a couple of different thoughts for you as we look through this chapter, or this section of this chapter, is three things. One is the eternal versus the physical. What kingdom are we working for? Are we working for this kingdom here on earth? We're we working and striving and thinking of and making choices based on that, that eternal kingdom. And I know it's hard. You know, life is has a way of doing some crazy things to people. You know, I have a, a lady right now who uh, we know who's uh, not going to leave a hospital. She didn't wake up one morning thinking that she was not going to leave a hospital. But she got, that's what she has right now. So life has a way of pre preventing or presenting afflictions and trials in our lives. But to her credit, her focus is eternal. And she's using these last times and this last period of time in her life to connect with people, to pray with people, to encourage people. Even people that she hasn't talked to or seen for years. All I'm trying to say is that though life hits us and sometimes life hits us really, really hard, we have a choice to make whether we want to stay focused on Christ or focused on our situations and, and our issues. So one, eternal versus the physical. Two is self or God. Are we a slave, like the Bible calls that we are? Are we a bond servant to Christ, like we as Christians should be? Or do we make choices and decisions based on this earth and this period of time? Who's our master? So first is the eternal versus the physical. The second is self versus God. And the third one is heaven or hell. 
Because that ultimately dictates this, doesn't it? Whether we have a relationship with Jesus Christ or not. So that is the choice. And that is the decision, isn't it? Whether we accept Christ as our Savior and Lord, and then we get this assurance, or we don't. Whether we get Christ to seal us with the Holy Spirit so that we were able to face those trials and tribulations, or we don't. I work with non-Christians every day. How they go through life without Christ blows my mind. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how I would live through my life without Christ in my life. So I just pray that you all can see the power and, and the joy of having Christ in your life and the value of that. And I pray that you guys all had a chance and all have come to know the living and true God as your personal Savior and Lord. Now in closing, I'm just going to read a section of passage going into chapter 5. Because that's what I love about the Bible is that it doesn't just end at the end, right? There's always a continuation. For we know, and this is cool because Brother Wayne talked about this last week. And so it's been very exciting for me as it has for, for Stanley, who's mentioned it many times, is that for some reason we're all on the same page. And we don't know why, but you know what, what Chuck said earlier today matches up very well. And what, what Pastor, when Pastor Wayne, uh, Brother Wayne, yes, last week said that he was preaching from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, my heart skipped a beat a little bit. Because, oh no, I'm going to have to change things up a little bit. But it was exciting that, that it kind of flows. So take what Pastor Wayne, or Brother Wayne said last week in, into consideration as, as everything that was said today. For we know that if the tent is our earthly home, it is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made of hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing by putting it on. We may not be found naked. For while we were still in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be sw swallowed up by this life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, and he has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. As a guarantee. As we are always of good courage, we know that while we were at home in the body, we were away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. As we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to praise Him. The goal, the aim, the focus is Christ. Whether we are here on this earthly dwelling, in these fleshly bodies of jars of clay, or whether we are in His presence, the focus is still Him. And I pray that as we live our weeks out and we live our days out and our hours and our minutes and our decisions that we make that our focus and our aim is Christ. No matter what trial, no matter what tribulation is put before you, no, no, how, no matter how big the mountain is that you have to face, I pray that your focus is Christ and you persevere to the end. Let's pray. Father I just praise you thank you so much for you thank you so much for you being in our lives thank you so much for the hope and that guarantee of eternity with you I can face today and tomorrow because of that Father I pray that you give me the courage to climb those mountains. You give me the courage to face the decisions and choices of today. 
with respect to eternity with you. Father, I pray that the gospel that is inside of me, Father, will shine through. And that people can come to know you because you use this broken vessel for your kingdom's work. Father, be with us all. Thank you so much for the death of Jesus on the cross for us and the sealing of the Holy Spirit, which is our guarantee. Be with us this day in your name. Amen.